Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making a start, at the very least, on my review of Sleep by Nick Littlehales. So, Nick Littlehales is an elite sports sleep coach. This is subtitled The Myth of Eight Hours, The Power of Naps, and The New Plan to Recharge Your Body and Mind. And this was uh, recommended to me by Alex A.B. Frank of formerly The Bookish Report here on YouTube, because um, we did an interview, so do check that out. And, um... Yeah, he knows that I'm an insomniac, so he recommended this to me. So I'm going to read you the blurb, then I'm going to go through it and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Dane reads. One third of our lives are spent trying to sleep. After restless nights, most of us rely on caffeine and sugar to drag us through the day. Yet the hours we spend in bed can be the biggest single influence on our mood, motivation and decision making skills. Nick Littlehales is the leading sleep coach to the biggest names in the sporting world, including Team Sky cyclists, Premiership footballers and Olympic gold medalists. In this groundbreaking book, he lays bare his strategies for us all to use. Discover how to map your personal sleep cycle, find the optimum room temperature and bedding, and most importantly, learn how napping will change your life. Read Sleep to learn from the best in sport and kickstart a more confident, successful, and happier you. So let's go through and check out some tab. So he mentions working with Sir Dave Brailsford, who was the former Team GB cycling coach, and he was famous for a, a principle he called marginal gains, where it was like, all of these tiny little improvements you can make all add up so like he even taught the cyclists the how to wash their hands properly so they caught fewer colds so they could spend more time training and all of that sort of stuff and so this was some interesting stats to kick things off the average person in britain gets a little over six and a half hours sleep a night furthermore over a third of the population gets by on only five to six hours a night seven percent more of us than just three years before it's a similar story around the world with over 20 percent of the population in the usa reporting less than six hours sleep on work days and japan and not far behind. The statistics show that in these countries, as well as the likes of Canada and Germany, most people catch up on their sleep at the weekend. Except, as he explains, that's not really how sleep works. You can't really catch up on sleep. Once you've missed it, it's gone. And he talks about chronotypes, which is basically whether you're a morning person or an evening person. So he says, chronotypes are a genetic trait and I can usually spot them a mile off in people I meet. Do you like staying up and going to bed late? Do you need, a, do you need an alarm to get you up for work in the morning? Are you partial to a nap in the daytime? Do you often skip breakfast? Do you sleep in on your days off? Then it's likely that you're a PMer. AMers wake naturally, enjoy their breakfast and love the mornings. They tend not to need an alarm to wake them. They're less likely to feel fatigued during the day and they go to bed reasonably early. He says here uh, on the subject of caffeine, studies show caffeine is at its most beneficial in athletes at moderate quantities of around three to six milligrams per kilo of body mass. And the Food Standards Agency in the UK recommends 400 milligrams as the daily intake of caffeine for the average person. To put that in perspective, a Starbucks Grande brewed coffee contains 330 milligrams. The same chain single espresso contains 75 milligrams and a home brewed cup of coffee can contain as much as 200 milligrams talks about people working from home and this is interesting because this was written pre-covid as well so he says for the increasing number of home workers we're seeing in society as working habits change 4.2 million were reported in the uk in 2014 some 13.9 percent of the workforce compared to 2.7 million in 1998 going for a good walk outside for some fresh air and sunlight is a good thing to incorporate into your routine before you start work 1998, I mean, that's early days of the internet. I can't even imagine working from home then. He talks about napping as well, and, and that's why uh, long haul pilots nap during the flight because they have an improved alertness when they're ready to land. He says, the power of the nap cannot be ignored. A study by the University of Dusseldorf has shown that even very short naps enhance memory processing. While a NASA study looking at their effects on pilots on long flights reported, naps can maintain or improve subsequent performance, physiological and subjective alertness, and mood. One of the authors of that report, Mark Rosekind, head of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the USA, has said that a 26 minute nap improves performance in pilots by 34% and alertness by 54%. And this was really interesting and I've actually have started sleeping like this sort of consciously now. He says, sleeping on your side is the only sleeping position I recommend, but it might not be the side you currently sleep on. When the athletes I coach go to bed at night, they get into the fetal position on their non-dominant side because this is the less used and therefore less sensitive side. In other words, if you're right-handed, you sleep on your left side and vice versa. If you're genuinely ambidextrous, think about which side you would instinctively use to protect yourself. And it's kind of the psychological idea that if you're lying with your right arm free and you're right-handed, it means if someone disturbs you in your sleep, you can, you know, fight them off easier. Some people go, and he goes, some people even let their pets on their bed. Yeah, I do that. Biggie actually sleeps next to me on the pillow beside me. And he talks about how the use of our bedrooms has evolved. It used to just be a sleeping place and now it's for so much more than that. 
He says, adolescents have always made their bedroom a parent-free sanctuary in which to indulge their solo pursuits and hopefully do their homework. University students in halls of residence and shared houses have to make do with a single room in which to study, sleep and have some personal downtime. In fact, it makes financial sense for many people in their 20s and even their 30s to continue living in shared houses as they set out on their careers. But what we're seeing now is this trend continuing even with people into their 40s and beyond who have good incomes and careers because prices in both the buying and rental markets, particularly in metropolitan and centres like London and New York are spiralling out of control. Fortunately, I do just sleep in my bedroom. He talks about how Wayne Rooney needs the sound of a vacuum cleaner or a hairdryer to fall asleep to. I normally fall asleep with uh, rain sleep sounds on, on my Google Home. And this was cool because I hadn't heard of this. He says, one of the latest biohacks being used in sport is Montomorensi tart cherries. These aren't the kind of cherries you'll find in the supermarket. They're grown mainly in the USA and available either dried or as a juice online and in health stores, but they're worth tracking down. Professor Glenn Howardson of Northumbria University has led numerous studies demonstrating their benefits on recovery after strenuous exercise, with one such piece of research proving that the cherries produce an increase in melatonin which is beneficial in improving sleep duration and quality in healthy men and women and might be of benefit in managing disturbed sleep. Here comes the cat, I can see him getting ready to jump up. And he says it can help to be aware of your circadian rhythms. Most world records in athletics and cycling are broken in the afternoon and evening. He also talks about wearable devices, things like the Fitbit, which like claim to track your sleep. And he says basically take them with a pinch of salt, they're probably not really that useful. I track my sleep on mine, but I, I just generally look at it as for curiosity rather than anything. And he talks about insomnia and how it can be a marker for other problems such as anxiety disorders and depression. Um, I have insomnia, anxiety and depression. Go me, a lot of fun. So he's talking about whether drugs are worth taking like to help you sleep and he says, uh, a study of Z drugs, the group of hypnotics to which Zolpidem belongs, reported an improvement of only 22 minutes on the length of time it took the subjects to get to sleep compared to a placebo. 22 minutes is a big upgrade. I would happily take 22 minutes less to get to sleep. And he talks about how if you work the night shift, most people might have a glass of wine in the evenings, but you can't really do that unless you want to be frowned upon by society. I say be frowned upon. And he talks about whether to avoid having sex before a big football match. And he says, Clemens Westerhoff, a Dutchman who achieved some success managing Nigeria's football team, put it best when he said, it's not the sex which tires out young players, it's the staying up all night looking for it. He also um, has a special thanks in the acknowledgements to his ghostwriter, Steve Burdett, which is interesting because you don't often see people, you know, admitting that they had a ghostwriter. And I think it would be healthier if people did. But yes. That's about all I have to share for you from Sleep by Nick Littlehales. Overall, there was a lot of food for thought. I found a lot of like, the science and stuff quite interesting. His ideas of using these like 90 minute phases isn't really going to work with me. Like a lot of the stuff in this I've tried to put into practice and it just doesn't work with the way that I sleep. Um, other people might have better luck, so who knows. But overall, I mean, there was still some good stuff in it. It did get a little dull at times. Ironically, it almost put me to sleep. Uh, I gave it like a middle of the road, like 3.5 out of 5. It was just all right. Probably hasn't really changed my relationship with sleep much. The main thing it's changed is that I now sleep on my left arm so that I got my right arm free to fight against predators. So there we have it, that's what I made of Sleep by Nick Littlehales. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.